Hi, this is TR for Stagecoach Road Sewing Machine Service. Today we have a good housekeeper. This is an early 60s machine made in Japan. Very precision, very heavy, very stylish. Okay, I just can't wait to show you all the cool features. Let's start with the light right here. Turn that guy on. This machine has a, a lot of really neat features. It has an automatic four-step buttonhole where it ticks from one to the next all by itself. Zigzag, yes. Over here is your zigzag width. Stays there. If you want to move the whole thing, a couple ways to do that. To like push in these little deals and that moves. So there you would stay at a three width zigzag. Now if you want to do a decorative stitch that gets wider and smaller and you want to be able to run that zigzag with your hand, you can push them all the way out and then you've got control of the zigzag as it moves. I'll show you a little bit of that when we get to sewing. So right now let's have no zigzag. Let's lock it on straight stitch, which is over at zero. I just want to say the feel of the controls are very, very precision and very nice. It's a pleasure to operate a machine like this. Here you've got your reverse for reverse stitching. This is your stitch length. Very ornate knob, all kinds of nifty, beautiful mid-century styling with that there. Very smooth to turn. Here'll be your bobbin winder. Let's we'll be doing that in a minute. This control drops your feet down. No case top. You just get the base with this. Or you could mount it, would be my suggestion, would be to mount it in any singer style cabinet that's made for a flatbed sewing machine. Which is what this is. You can get it up underneath there. Look at how clean and beautiful it is. Very simple, sturdy, precision work in there. No plastic parts. All metal. The wiring checks out very safe. Not a problem with that. Class 15 bobbin assembly with a bobbin case. You're probably familiar with that if you've sewn before. This machine is a left needle low shank. you got to remember that when you're buying attachments. Talk more about that in a minute. First we've got a thread of bobbin. Which we do right over here. Put your bobbin on the spindle. Make sure your bobbin is seated on there. And push this wonderful chrome knob. All the chrome on this machine is in great shape. Press the foot control. And we're winding a bobbin. Now we're just going to wind a little bit for this demonstration. But if you want to wind a full bobbin, you can just let the machine go. And it will take off automatically when it's full. Like that to get the bobbin in. See that little thing that latches in right there? Very cool. Let it down. It's kind of a heavy guy. That's easier to do when it's in a cabinet. Okay, let's thread the top. There's a pair of tension discs here. Actually there's two pairs because that you can sew twin needle with this machine. Let's use the the slot behind here. Through the slot, hold it with this hand. Through the spring, see the spring there? There we go. And then through the take up lever, let's raise it all the way to its highest position. Through the eyeball, woohoo! Take up lever. Down here, and now ooh, we're going to need to put in a needle. Always use good quality needles. Don't expect your precision sewing machine to sew well with cheap thread and needles. There is a difference. This machine uses standard Singer or Schmitz or organ needles. Flat side faces the back of the machine. The needle goes all the way up in, all the way up in, flat side to the back. And then tighten your needle clamp, finger tight. Needle threads from front to back. Bring up your bottom thread. There it is. Okay, draw them both out. Back under the pressure foot. You're ready to sew. Let's try a piece of shirting, Oxford cloth here. Basic stuff. You'd be making shirts or dresses or whatever, curtains. Let's just put a couple layers of that in. And try a basic old state straight stitch. Okay, so we're on, let's put it on about, oh, 
three stitches per inch, not per inch, excuse me, three millimeter stitches. This is a Japanese machine. Three correspond to about 12 stitches per inch on an American Singer type machine. Hold your threads and let's sew. Very smooth. Look at that. Reverse. The machine does have a bit of belt noise to it. It's quite strong. Very smooth in the mechanism here. Let's try a zigzag. Let's move this one over all the way. So now I should have the full width of zigzag. And I'm going to turn my stitch length down just a bit. So they'll be a little closer together this way as well. Whoop, watch. Okay, now I've got a wide zigzag. And as I let it down, I get a smaller one. Turn the stitch length up a bit. Look at those neat shapes I can make there. That neat applique kind of stuff. So that's how I was making the zigzag wider and longer and smaller all at the same time. And it's really balanced on the back. Nice tension on that. So that's the beauty of being able to move your zigzag however you want it. But if you want to lock it on wide, you would put it like that. For, um, I was talking about applique. This machine comes with, actually it's not the standard foot. It's an applique foot. It's got a groove on the bottom. So you can do that sort of heavy stitching very evenly. For your regular everyday sewing, you're going to want to put on a standard zigzag foot. Remember, this is uh, a low shank machine. Let's try some heavier fabric to see what happens. My husband's jeans. Okay. Two layers. Just two. And let's put it still on the zigzag. Let's look at that. It would be great if you wanted to do some decorative stitching. All right. Well now say you want to move that your own self. You want to do free motion quilting. Over here is your feed drop. Let's put it on darn. Darn. Up here is your foot pressure. Now the combination of these two things is what allows free motion quilting. So let's push the outer ring and release the pressure. Did you see that go up? When I want normal pressure, I push it back down about to there. Darning or free motion, like that. It's called a patchomatic. Very cool invention. Now, with no feed and no pressure, I should have complete control of this machine. Be able to do any kind of embroidery that I want to do. This is really fun. Once you get into doing this kind of stuff, you can make all kinds of neat, you know, draw something on the fabric and then draw it with this sewing machine. So by manipulating your zigzag and your stitch length, you can get different widths of stuff, but then you're moving it with your own hands. With this Very nice feature of this machine. Very really easy to engage. Not a problem at all. I want to show you how this machine can handle some denim. Like for real. Okay, so we just did that for fun. Look at that. Pretty cool. Let's do six layers. Now, of course, you'd want to put in the correct needle for sewing a true project with denim. But we're just going to do this for a demonstration to show you that the machine has no problem sewing through a lot of layers. Let's put it on the long stitch length. No zigzag. Yes, that's a rooster you're hearing in the background. Ah, not a problem. Right over that seam. Look at that! Look at that! Okay, I want to show you why this machine is so good at heavy fabric. This was incredible. It just ate right through that. Um, the feed dog is the part underneath the machine that actually pulls the fabric through. That's this thing here. This machine is very unusual in that the fact that it has feed teeth on all four sides of the needle hole. That provides for really exceptional fabric control when sewing heavy fabric, doing embroidery, really light stuff. It's just, this is a really excellent sewing machine. It's smooth. It's, it's just very precise. It's very fun to work with. <coughs> Excuse me, fun to work with. 
and it's pretty. Um, can be yours. Stagecoach Road Sewing Machine. Thank you for watching.